Hello and welcome to Let's Talk, an award-winning series of podcasts produced and delivered by the Hazelden Betty Ford Foundation. Each podcast focuses on an issue related to addiction, from prevention and research to treatment, current events, trends, advocacy, and of course, recovery from a substance use disorder. I'm your host, William Moyers, and I'm joined today by none other than the legendary Jerry Moe. Welcome, Jerry. It's so good to be with you, William. It's always good to be with you. I remember when I was first working at Hazelden, as we then were, and I would run into you at conferences, and I would sit there in the audience and listen to you talk on the subject that has been so important, that got so much neglect early on, which is about the impact that addiction has on children. And here we are now, all these years later, and you're the director of all of our children's programs at the Hazel and Betty Ford Foundation. You've been, made such a difference in the lives of families and particularly in the lives of children. Just very briefly, tell us why children are so important in the continuum. Well, I was at Center City a few weeks ago in Bigelow Auditorium. Now, you've presented on that mm-hmm. stage many times, and what an historic stage to present on. Mm-hmm. There were maybe 225 patients in treatment, all levels of care. I did a lecture, Changing the Family Legacy. William, about 10 minutes into that lecture, I asked the audience, how many of you grew up with this disease? And you know, it brought me to tears because what I had to quickly do is stop counting the hands up and look at the hands that weren't raised, which is about 12 people in the audience. Mm. So we're talking about a disease that often is multi-generational in cycle. You know, from generation to generation, and where does this stop? And so to start with kids who were growing up at this, with this disease, and to just really try to intervene on it every way imaginable. Which is why it's so exciting what's happened between Hazel and Betty Ford, your interest in children, and Sesame Street. When we got together last time, we had just started that collaborative experiment, and now it's much more than just an experiment, it's a reality. Tell us about it. Well, it's funny, I was leaving Center City, coming back to Center City one more time, and Sis Wenger, our dear friend, from NACOA, NACOA, president and CEO of NACOA, had sent me a text message saying, Sesame Street wants to talk to us, and they're interested in the seven C's. Seven C's? The seven C's. So, seven C's, and I'll tell you, I learned the first three of them when I went to my first 12-step meeting in 1969. (laughs) So I didn't cause it. I can't control it, and I can't cure it. That's three. That's three. And that comes from Al-Anon family groups. Mm -hmm. And so I learned those in Alateen way, way back when. Made a huge difference in my life, in my family. But when I became a children's therapist and we started working with boys and girls, what I realized Those three C's are important, but they only tell boys and girls what they can't do. They don't necessarily tell them what to do. Uh And so we added the four so I can help take care of myself by communicating feelings, making healthy choices, and celebrating me. And so Sesame Street had found that activity. They thought it was fun and simple and child-friendly. And they reached out to NACOA. What better resource could they ever reach out to that really knows about this issue? Mm -hmm. And so with Sis and I, that that led us to being on set and to really working hand in hand with Sesame Street on each and every part of this initiative on parental addiction. Sesame Street, a number of years ago, when you talk about iconic, you think about that at Hazelden, Betty Ford, we celebrated 70 years last year. Mm -hmm. Sesame Street celebrated 50 championing children, loving kids, but they realize that children today are growing up with so much trauma that one of the issues they decided to look at was parental addiction and the impact that it has because there's so few resources, especially for little kids, William. So that's why this is so incredibly exciting. And so now it's 2020. This is season 51 of Sesame Street. And what's going to happen? Actually, Carly will be on the series this year. Carly. Carly. So Carly, oh, she is just beautiful. Uh, Lime green with blonde pigtails. Just precious, beautiful little girl who was first introduced by Sesame Street as a Muppet who was living in foster care. When the Parental Addiction Initiative came up, they just continued the storyline in that um, Carly's mom has been just devastated by an addiction to opioids. 
and she needed to go to treatment to get help. Real life. Real life. And so as Carly's mom is ready to come home from treatment, that's where we pick up this story. But, and for so many women today, William, and you know this so well, sometimes have to make a choice between do I go to a treatment, do I take care of my yes. kids? And Carly's mom knew she needed to get help. And so she went to do that. But in order to do so, Carly was in foster care. So how is Hazel and Betty Ford, and specifically how have you, and Nicoa and Siswinger, how have you all helped to inform what's happening on the set at Sesame Street? Uh, we have been involved in the story development and all the resources that I'd love to share a couple with you. Please. Our fingerprints are on all of those. Such as? Such as rewriting scripts. Really? For the, for the videos that were shot, being on set and asking Sesame Street, and I, I giggle because there was a part of me inside that says, oh, don't say anything, don't say anything. But shooting a segment with Carly, and it was like, no, no, you're missing a bit of it. And while Carly's got survivor pride, she's just this vulnerable little girl. And when she's talking about her mom's problem for the first time, she needed to be much more tentative and nervous. And, and then as she was accepted by Elmo and Chris, <laughs> for Mr. Uh, Hooper's store, you can just see the relief and the joy and the excitement. And so um, Sesame Street picked one program across the United States to feature on their website around the Parental Addiction Initiative. And they chose the Hazel and Betty Ford Children's Program, huge. And Cynthia Galaviz Olivas, who's our supervisor, they came out and filmed her for a day, a day in the life. Uh, and, and Helene Fodius, our director of operations, yes. point person, seamlessly. People at Sesame Street were here for two days. I was in Ohio. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even here. And, and they, they talked about the essence of our children's program, the Hazel and Betty Ford children's program, the Bag of Rocks, and yeah. artwork, and writing stories, and play, and fun, and the hope that's generated here. I mean, the folks at Sesame Street fell in love with our space, and the staff, but just the spirit of hope and optimism that's here in the children's program. So we were involved in that. Uh, we helped them create a storybook called Play, Talk, and Imagine. And in the storybook, so we, we rewrote it, we pointed things out, and they, were, they really treated us as equal collaborators in all of this. And Sesame Street so, knows so much about kids, but what Hazel and Betty Ford and Nicoa can do we know this issue yes. and can really inform them. And, and, and the brilliance of Sesame Street is knowing when to ask for help to make it the best product mm -hmm. possible. Mm -hmm. So in this storybook, it's all about Carly's mommy is just about to come home. Carly's scared. Is mommy going to be okay? And in the storybook, she's furiously making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. <laughs> she says, i got to make a lot of them. And then she explains because oh, when mommy got sick, um, I learned how to make them. And that's what I ate for lunch and dinner. And sometimes I would feed mommy. So when mommy comes home, is she going to be okay? Is she going to be able to feed me? Am I going to still need to feed her? Um, is she going to use drugs again? And so done in, in, in such a sensitive way, it's a great book that a grandparent, mm -hmm. that a preschool teacher, that we use in treatment now throughout our system when a mom or dad comes to Hazel and Betty Ford and they left home a five-year-old or an eight-year-old and really didn't have the right words to explain to a child, this is where mom's going, this is where dad's going to get help right now. As we know, when, when difficult subjects, when stigmatized subjects like addiction, like the impact addiction has on children, those sorts of things, when they go public, um, that's a good thing, but oftentimes it opens Pandora's box to people who need help. So what's gonna happen when Carly is featured um, in the Sesame series on television and children or their parents are viewing it and all of a sudden they realize they're talking about them? Where are they gonna get help? Where are they gonna get the resources? Well, what's fascinating, and again, speaks so highly of Sesame Street, if you go on the website, what you'll find is a whole section of resources for parents and caregivers. How do I rebuild trust? 
oh, yes. for professionals. How do I support these boys and girls? Maybe when a parent is in treatment or they've not been to treatment or we simply can't find them, but also at the website. Just good, dedicated um, list of resources that people can call to for help. And what's amazing, Hazelden Betty Ford is featured on that resource Beautiful. page. And, and what I'm most proud about, William, of all, is there's a direct link to our children's program. What's been the biggest surprise for you, Jerry? I mean, you've been around a long time. You've been down in the trenches for decades, and you've worked, as we talked about, at Hazel and, Hazel and Betty Ford for 22 years now. In this Sesame Street collaboration, this relationship, what's been the big aha, the big surprise for you? What a great question, William. Maybe the biggest is just a reminder that even younger boys and girls, four, five, and six-year-olds, are more deeply affected than we ever give them credit for. You know, as you know, boys and girls that young, they don't have the cognitive development, so they can't connect the dots, but they know that something's wrong. And way too often, unfortunately, little kids think there's something wrong, you know, addiction is a disease of silence and secrecy. And because nobody talks about what it is, so many little kids, that's where the seeds begin to, to be planted about maybe it's my fault, maybe I've done something wrong. So then by the time they come to the Hazel and Betty Ford Children's Program, whether it's here at, in California or in Colorado or in Minnesota, you know, you, we see the impact that it's had when they're seven or eight years old. So I think one of the biggest things is, is just remembering that even younger kids are so impacted because when you love someone, and, you know, and, and, it, and it's interesting that one of the biggest discussions we had with Nicoa and Sis as well is how do we take a, 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 such a complex subject like addiction and how do we make it simple age appropriate, but honest and direct. Yes. And, and back and forth for months, uh -huh. William, and what we decided is here's what we say tell kids. So, um, you know, people have a brain sickness and they need alcohol and drugs to feel okay, but then they act different. And then they feel bad and they need more and more. And so being able, just, just to simplify it, but that's the disease, and it does impact mm -hmm. younger kids. And now having the resources, uh, for Hazel and Betty Ford, having the resources so that if I'm a counselor oh, in, in St. Paul at Fellowship Club, and I've got a mom who has two young kids, and, and, and I'm struggling in my recovery, that counselor can now say, let me give you the book. Let me give you Carly's seven C coloring thing that you can do with your child and help empower parents to have the tools to know that their kids are getting okay so then they can focus on themselves. Because the challenge of addiction, got to put all our heart and soul into that. And Jerry Moe, you've put your heart and your soul not just into the problem but into the solution and not just for the person who has the illness but as you noted today, for the children of that person. Thanks so much for taking the time uh, out of your busy schedule, your relentless schedule, to be with us today on this podcast. Yeah, and I thank you. You have been such a light for so many years about the promise of hope and recovery for the entire family, William. So you constantly inspire me, and what a gift to get to work with you every day. Thanks, Jerry. There's strength in numbers, and here we are together. Together. Jerry Moe the relentlessly passionate, competent, and change agent that he is for all families who are struggling with addiction. Thanks for joining us today, and thanks to all of you for uh, tuning in to another edition of Let's Talk. Please share this with your friends, your colleagues, your fellow travelers, your families, and especially share this podcast with your children. We'll see you again. <laughs>